Hello, and welcome to my latest video. We are looking at the new Horus Heresy models, uh, which have come out recently, the Horus Heresy 2.0. And this video is uh, all based on painting the Emperor's Children. Um, so we have uh, we've got the model uh, all glued together here. We uh, Beaky Marine is a Mark VI. Um, so we've got the, the bumpy shoulder pads. Uh, yes, I could have taken a little bit more time and filled in the gaps on that shoulder pad. The easiest way of doing that is just by using a little bit of glue um, when you're when you're pushing them together. Um, but uh, it's been primed black and these are the paints which we're going to use. So we've got the um, was it Galvorback red? Um, no, it was a burgundy. Hang on. It's the burgundy one. So uh, Barrack Nar burgundy uh, which is a great little paint. Uh, be a good paint for the for the purple. I like I like using a um, a tone underneath the purples, just to give it a um, a focus on the hue. And uh, right there, we were looking at the brushes. So the brushes the, the brush I'm going to use is an Artis Opus. Uh, so this is an Artis Opus. It's a small dry brush. Um, I, personally, I don't really like these dry brushes. Uh, they they're incredibly expensive for for not really that good quality. Um, but the, the the benefit of it is that it has has got a little bit. It's, it's a smaller paintbrush than the one that I the other one that I showed, which is just uh, a paintbrush that I got down at a hobby store. Um, so the Artis Open one was about ten times the price. The 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 benefit of it is that it's a little bit smaller and it does have a, sort of a bit of a point, so you can control a little bit where it, where the paint is going. Uh, but this kind of this kind of style of painting, um, you can just 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 grab a uh, a round um, round paintbrush from a hobby store, um, and if you really want to, you can just kind of trim the ends off a little bit. Uh, far easier than um, uh, grabbing one of these artist opus brushes. I've, I I bought one of these to try, um, and I, I'm just making making use of it as and when I can. Uh, you'll see the next video that I do. Um, I don't even use it at all, um, but um, yeah. So we've got. We've got this, uh, the burgundy paint, uh, and we've watered it down. I haven't got the wet palette camera on uh, just yet. It will be coming. I need to uh, rearrange the cameras a little bit to get the wet palette camera up. Uh, it's something on my Twitch stream as well, which I want to try and get sorted, so that will be coming. Um, but as you can see, we're applying it on, and it's looking incredibly wet. Now, it's, it's, probably, it's probably two parts water to one part paint. Uh, so it is quite thin um, because we're applying it in this kind of stippling fashion you don't want thick paint uh, you can see the uh, the shoulder pad there is already starting to dry and it's 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 a flat surface it's a smooth flat surface uh, there's no texture we're not getting any texture from from using too thick a paint um, sorry for drifting off the this uh, the screen a little bit there um, but uh, yeah this is uh, this is just a burgundy burgundy paint, and we're, we're building it up um, as much as we can all over the model um, before we go to the Phoenician purple. Now, the Phoenician purple uh, is sort of the it's going to well, it's going to be the tone of the of the whole model. The Phoenician purple is going to be the tone of the whole model. Purple is a bit of a tricky paint to uh, a bit of a tricky color to paint um, when when you're trying to get uh, a good good finish. Um, and also working on your highlights because you can you can take purple um, a few different ways you can go a little bit more blue with the highlights or you can go a little bit more uh, red and therefore pink with the highlights um, I've, I've gone a little bit pink on this one as you can see because we, we use the pink horror we had the pink horror up earlier um, but um, yeah that's that's the that's the burgundy pretty much pretty much uh, coated down coated on there um, it's, uh, it's it's had a couple of coats just to get just to get the coverage, uh, making sure we're we're trying to stay pretty much all over the model. Um, uh, there's, there's there's certain certain places where we're trying to uh, keep some shadow in there, uh, so not not painting right underneath the model or anything. Um, some of the some of the shadow areas underneath the shoulder pad and things like that, but we want to try and get it everywhere. Um, yeah, and then as we're building it up, this is the texture that we're we're trying to create with the uh, with the with the stippling 
it uh, it creates something a little bit more interesting. Um, you can do you can, uh, you can do this very very easily with an airbrush, uh, and arguably it's going to be quicker with an airbrush. But you don't you don't you don't quite get such an interesting uh, finish with the airbrush. Um, the um, the airbrush creates like the smooth transitions and everything, but with this one, you you have a little bit more texture and a bit more interest across the whole model, um, which is which is really rather nice. Um, so I've just cleaned uh, cleaned a little bit of the brush out, um, and then dried it out dried it off a little bit. Uh, we still wanted them to use a damp brush, but we don't want it soaking wet. So that's that's uh, after the the burgundy paint is on, uh, and now we're going to go to the the uh, Phoenician purple. So this is going to be applied uh, and we're getting this in um, we're, we're basically we're, we're going to try and look at um, light volumes uh, with this and trying to um, leave areas which are in shadow um, for the uh, for the burgundy paint for the for the darker red paint to come through and the red just gives a little bit uh, of um, contrasting color into the shadows gives you a nice nice shadow color down there um, but um, yeah, just building it up, making sure we're picking on um, areas where the light is going to be landing. Uh, we are, uh, in terms of light volumes on this one, we're looking at very, very large light volumes, so we don't want to be picking out. You'll see when we get to the pink, uh, the pink horror, where we're really starting to, to, to be a little bit more specific about where the light is, let, uh, where the light is going to be landing, and where the colours are going to be landing. Uh, but you can see just applying on the back, on the backpack there. Uh, we're not scrubbing it in. We're not kind of stippling underneath, um, underneath the transitions between um, armor panels or anything like that. We're quite happy to leave the uh, the burgundy in those in those shadows um, for some contrast uh, later on. Now, um, <laughs> yeah. So later on, I do I do uh, I do take it in a little bit of a di different direction. So I try I try using contrast paints on this. Um, I don't like the finish, so um, you'll see me um, uh, redo this this layer and then the pink uh, on top. So um, it's it's it, it will look a little bit different, but only because like the brush marks are slightly different. They're all in exactly the same place and everything, so uh, I wouldn't worry about that. It was just I tried the contrast paints because that's that's uh, uh, the wash that I was thinking was going to work, um, and it just didn't quite didn't quite get there. Anyway. So Phoenician purple, uh, we're applying it. Applying it um, uh, again. This is two parts water to one part paint, so it is quite. It is very very thin. Uh, we're building it up. It's going to take a couple of layers again. Um, you can see it's incredibly wet, um, and it doesn't dry that patchy. Um, so the the patchiness you're getting is is pretty much from um, the the shine, the wet shine um, from the model. Uh, the, uh, the the wetness. Um, so as it dries, uh, you will you will lose that shine. You'll lose a little bit of the patchiness, uh, and it will smooth out a little bit. Um, so now this is the pink horror. So uh, the pink horror it, it is quite a heavy step up. So it's quite a big highlight, um, a quite a high highlight. And you'll see when we start adding it, um, you don't want to have too much on the brush with this. It is still watered down. Um, but you don't want to have too much on the brush and we're applying it. This is one of the reasons why the Artist Opus brush is arguably quite helpful with this because it has got a, a little bit of a stubby point um, so you can be uh, a bit more, I don't really want to say precise, but you can be a, a little bit more controlled with where you're putting the, uh, where you're putting the, the highlights. Um, you could at this point just kind of swap to a, you know, something like a size one, uh, size two, um, and um, ap apply it like that. So you could uh, apply the dots individually with a size one or a two. Um, but uh, you'll see we, we're, we're applying the paint down, and then so you you apply it with a tap, um, and then the subsequent taps uh, you do it. You, you're being very very light with the touches here, but the subsequent taps after you've applied the paint. Um, so that 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 was a little bit too much on that brush. There, you can see. Uh, so just kind of tapping top with my finger. Um, but the subsequent taps uh, are, are pretty much just to kind of blend it in around the edge. So you 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 tapping the paint on, and then the subsequent taps are around that that area which you've just dropped it, dropped the paint down on, um, just to just to kind of soften soften the areas out uh, and give a little bit of a transition. 
Um, but uh, yes, it looks absolutely atrocious at the moment. Don't worry, it won't look like that at the end. Um, it is looking very bad. Uh, but you can see we're working on on just the just the areas which the light is going to hit. Um, so I do a lot of my models. Well, I do all my models uh, as if the light is coming from from camera right, if you like. So as you're looking at the person, as you're looking at the model, the light is coming from the right hand side. Um, so all the highlights like this this shoulder pad here that's going to be on the on the right hand side um, the helmet is predominantly on the right hand side and then the other shoulder pad is is uh, is pulled a little bit further over to the right um, same with the legs the legs are going to be predominantly highlighted on the right hand side um, and then the the rear um, you don't have to do quite so many highlights on the on the back of him um, I quite like having a little bit more darker finish on the back of models uh, when you're doing them like this. Now, one thing I haven't talked about is the actual model itself. Now, the Horus Heresy, the new Horus Heresy models are, um, they're really, really nice. Um, and because the because the, the, the sculpts and everything are so clean, um, because the sculpts are so clean, the, they, they really lend themselves to really simple paint jobs uh, like this um, so you can um, you can add really simple transitions um, the, the texture is quite nice because you can get the because they haven't got a lot of detail on the actual models themselves and they're quite plain and simple you can add texture with uh, sorry you can add details uh, with the texture from the painting surface um, and the chipping that we're going to do later on um, and particularly for the World Eaters one, which is a video that will be coming, uh, you're getting the, the interest and the details um, from from other areas than the model itself, uh, because the model is so clean and simple. Um, anyway, uh, you'll see now we've swapped brushes. Um, so this is the sort of brush that you could apply the pink with, um, uh, rather than the rather than the kind of the stabby dry brush. Um, stippling method uh, so you could uh, you could add the purple on uh, sorry the pink you could add the pink on with this brush uh, but you'll see what we're doing like, like this look uh, so you'll see um, we've we went back with the Phoenician purple um, and we just soften the transitions between um, between the pink horror and the Phoenician purple just a fraction uh, just to make it uh, a little bit less stark um, with the with the blend between the two and now we're just going in with some more pink horror and just picking out some absolute hot spots so these are these are very very small hot spots which are going to be uh, with uh, once we once we do the glaze over the top they're going to stand out a little bit more so they're just going to help help pop the model and keep the contrast nice and high a um, little bit of edge highlighting I, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't worry too much about the edge highlighting at the moment um, because we do get you do go back over uh, later on and add, add the edge highlighting back in again after it's had the glaze uh, so I wouldn't worry too much about edge highlighting things now um, arguably if, if you do do it you do end up with a little bit of a uh, a little bit of a transition like a soft highlight um, after we've done the glaze um, but um, yeah it's just <laughs> there's a nice kind of edge highlight running down uh, sorry a, um, a specular highlight running down the back of the legs um, and, and edge highlighting on the uh, on the rear of the backpack as well and uh, that's that's where you need to get to so you need to get to something like that now I do like I, as I said earlier I do then go over and I contrast paint it I don't like it so I go back uh, and I get it back up to this point now you'll see that the texture has gone a little bit um, I, I I added a little bit um, a little bit more of the pink horror, so the, the texture has gone a little bit. So you could get it up to this point if you want. Um, and now all we're doing is we're adding Phoenician purple. This is a uh, we're adding a glaze of this. So this is eight or nine parts water to one part paint. Uh, so it's quite thin. Um, and all we're going to do is we we're, we're, we're going to kind of glaze it all over the model. Um, Making sure that we're pulling away from the pink um, in the in the kind of the final uh, the final brush mark sort of thing. So we're pulling away from the pink, um, and it'll it will uh, what this will do is as you're dragging across the pink, it will leave the Phoenician purple pigments 
um, across the transition and it will just soften the transition out a little bit. Uh, and I find this uh, this worked a lot better than the than the contrast paint. I I tried um, shyish purple, but the shyish purple was just it was it was too um, it was too dark uh, and it didn't quite get the get didn't quite get the filter that I was looking for. Um, so I I preferred this one. Uh, anyway, yes. Yeah, so it's Phoenician purple. It's uh, it's thinned down nice and um, thinned down quite a lot. Um, I did this in a well palette actually, uh, so one of the little well palettes that you get with the uh, with the Redgrass Games wet palette. Um, I use the, I'm starting to use the well palettes a lot more at the moment. Uh, also using them for metallics as well, as you'll see in a little while. We'll start doing the uh, the gold metallics. Um, so if you apply you you're applying this um, glaze slash wash. It's it's a bit more of a glaze than it is a wash. Um, you're applying this all over the model now. A few times you've seen me apply it uh, over the pink, and it it just completely over the powers of pink like that there. So that that you you the the pink has almost vanished now, but because it's so wet, you can drag, you can drag the purple away from the pink, um, and even though it's uh, so that so that's where you'll get the softening of the of the highlights down a little bit, uh, but you can then pull the pull the purple away from the pink to keep the pink nice and bright. Um, so that that part there uh, it went over, and we're just pulling it away from the pink area to keep that highlight prominent. Um, and as it starts, uh, so yeah, this, as as this starts drying, don't try to touch it again because what you'll do is you'll start ripping the paint, uh, and you don't want to be doing that. Uh, so all I'm doing is working nice and quickly, uh, making sure that I'm not covering the 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 pink up too much. Um, and dragging the uh, dragging the glaze away from the pinks if I do, um, and just kind of keep keep working keep working the transitions um, because it's so wet it's it's really quite really quite easy to kind of keep going. Um, it doesn't dry that quickly. Um, as soon as you get the idea that it is starting to dry, you can see the bit on the backpack now is starting to dry. Um, but uh, you can just kind of keep pulling pulling those pulling the purple away. Uh, from the center of the pinks uh, and working on the transitions um, and then once it's dry you'll see in a second um, it, it actually pulls everything together and you'll you'll probably, um, you'll probably agree that this this looks already it looks looks much better than the uh, than the, <laughs> the stippled um, finish that we had before um, so there we go that's what uh, that's what it should look like as it's drying and then after it has dried after 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 it has dried, uh, you'll end up with something that looks like this. So that's with the nice transitions everywhere. Uh, you've still got some highlights. You've still got some hot spots, um, and uh, the, the, this kind of leans into my contrasty painting style quite well. Um, I do like having some some uh, contrast. Somebody said that um, uh, I highlight with colours um, rather than highlight with whites. Um, so uh, I. I <laughs> It kind of, that kind of works. Uh, I, I can kind of relate to that. Uh, anyway, so we've have this is this is basically the the finish that we've got on here is is basically from three colours. So we've uh, we've used the burgundy, we've used the purple, and then we have used the pink. Um, but the pink, we've uh, all we've done is we've glazed the transition over from the pink and the purple, uh, and we've got to uh, we've got to this this finish here. Um, now we could uh, apply the metallic straight away onto this, but what I'm doing is I'm just applying some model colour black. Uh, it's my it's my favourite black. You can use Abaddon black. Uh, the difference between Abaddon black and model colour is that the model colour is very very matte. It's a much more matte finish, whereas the Abaddon is a bit more satin. The uh, I do have Abaddon black in my repertoire if you like, um, because it's a very very good. So the Games Workshop colours make very good glazes, uh, as you can see with the purple that we used earlier. Um, so I I, uh, I have a lot of the dark colours for. Um, for glazes um, and things like that so uh, I do have it but uh, when I'm just bulking out and um, um, having it having a, a base layer to put metallics on I love using the, the model color black so this is just this is just going to be where the metallics are going to go and also we just blacked out the gun as well so uh, just be careful when you're doing this you can go back in quite easily with the Phoenician purple if you do make a mistake Um, and interestingly, when you're painting these little bumps on the shoulder pad, if you do if you do them one side at a time, so you've seen I've done the top side, uh, I've done the top side of those bumps, 
uh, and you can see from the underneath now I haven't done the underside um, so if you, you can quite easily do the top side so if you angle it so that you can just paint the top side of the of the uh, the nodules on the shoulder pad um, they're quite easy to paint kind of a half half the uh, the nodules from from the upper side um, and then all you have to do is you you turn the model upside down and then you paint the nodules from from the underneath um, there we go so we're just applying black to everything which is going to be either gold or silver um, and also blacking in the little rib the little ribs between um, there we go so the hips uh, and the knees uh, and also the elbows I forget to do it in this video but uh, I do go back and add add some uh, black to the elbows now I, I, I do a little bit thin this down a little bit um, so that's just had um, another brush load of um, water added to this mix just so that it's it's it adds a bit of a shade as opposed to just like uh, rather than the whole thing just being black now it has added a tiny bit of a a shadow and a highlight uh, just a kind of a cheap 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 way of um of, of doing these nice and quickly so that's that's allowing the paint to run into the recesses and then you've you've got a little bit of a highlight which uh, ends up being a bit of a a, a dark purple highlight um, but uh, it, it, it does actually have something in there so there we go so I applied those to the ribs uh, and again these are uh, they're really easy to get to nothing is really difficult to get to on this model everything's really quite easy to paint um, easy to reach um, and applying a little a bit of black for the top of the uh, the helmet ready for some silver on there uh, and then the ears as well little ear packs on the side of the helmet <laughs> I need to work on uh, keeping my model in screen uh, apologies for drifting off again uh, it is my first uh, as, as, as some of you will know it is my first first patreon video back uh, for a while now um, I've been going through um, new PCs uh, new software uh, trying to find time uh, between Twitch streaming and commissions um, and I thought Horus Heresy was going to be the would be the perfect, perfect thing to use to uh, re reboot this um, Patreon stream a little bit. So we've got uh, the metallics I'm going to be using. It's Necro Gold from Scale Color, which is a really good. It's a really good. It's a it's a bit more of a greener gold than a lot of the Games Workshop golds that you will see, um, and I think it it leans really well into uh, a bit more of an evil evil gold uh, and also because it's a green greener gold it, it balances out this purple quite well it contrasts against this purple really rather well so this is one of the good things about um, the scale color metallics is they've got an incredibly fine grind on the metallic flex which are which are in the paint um, and they cover really really well um, however, I do water them down just a little bit, so probably 75% paint to 25% water, just a just a dab of water in there, just to ease the flow, just helps the flow a little bit. Uh, and these these cover really well. The paints paints on these cover really well. They use a gel medium, which I think um, um, floats the metallic fleck in there really really quite nicely. Um, and then the other the the silver paint that I'm using is um black metal so scale color black metal it's again it's an absolutely lovely paint uh covers very very well it's an almost it's, it's almost like a bluey uh, a dark bluey silver um and uh, it allows a lot of highlight room uh, and gives a good base um occasionally when i'm painting uh, some higher standard models so these are very much kind of tabletop standard um i'm trying to get them painted uh, nice and quickly um, occasionally when I'm doing some of my higher end models uh, I will mix some some black in with the black metal uh, just to knock the gloss level down a fraction and uh, that adds a bit of control over where you can add the highlights and things uh, you can also do the same so uh, as you'll see in a little bit I, uh, I apply a little bit of a uh, the, the model color black I turn that into a kind of a bit of a glaze wash so that I can glaze a little bit of darkness into some of the metallics um, so gold on the center, um, it just seemed to fit. I, I thought I thought that would look quite nice with the gold on the center of the of the chest. Um, so Empress children are predominantly kind of gold and pink or gold and purple. I didn't want to have too much gold on this model, 
uh, I wanted it to, to to be a bit more prominently purple so I, I tried to limit as much gold as I could uh, you could do the for instance you could do the tips of the uh, the backpack you could do those gold um, you could uh, you, you could you could make one entire um, one entire shoulder pad gold if you wanted um, but just make sure so if you were looking at the shoulder pad on the left here uh, just make sure that as you're applying that gold uh, then you would highlight it um, in the same way as you have done with the um, as with the pink uh, in that little hot spot in the center of the in the center of the uh, shoulder pad so applying this black metal so we're just picking out some of the uh, metallic areas of the gun um, the, the, the gun itself uh, I have drilled the drum uh, I have drilled the gun barrels make sure <laughs> make sure you do drill your gun barrels uh, it's, it's quite easy to do um, I, I do it with a um, with a craft knife so uh, you get a nice pointy blade new pointy blade on your craft knife um, and it also helps you find the center of the gun barrel uh, quite well with a with a uh, with a craft knife so uh, just just put put the gra craft knife into the center of the barrel give it a twist to make a mark uh, and then twist a little bit deeper to get to uh, to make the hole um, so that's how I do my gun barrels and you can see that one's drilled there uh, you, you you could if you want to drill the side barrels as well so um, if you look at the barrel it's got um, two two slots on either side as well so you could drill those as well um, it just makes it a little bit awkward because there are slots now rather than just holes uh, so if you if you do choose to drill them, um, if you have a if you have a small drill bit that goes in there, you can very very carefully kind of put some sideways pressure on it and uh, almost cut away uh, the elongated hole uh, on the side of the gun barrel as well. So that would be an option. And as with most things, with uh, with. Uh, anybody who paints Chaos Space Marines or Titanicus or anything like that, uh, you'll know that the trim takes <laughs> takes the longest amount of time. Uh, so all the trim and the little bits on here do take do take quite a, quite a lengthy period of time. But um, for under an hour paint job, uh, I think this is pretty good. Uh, you can get these get these knocked out quite quickly. Uh, they've got some good detail on them. Uh, they look really good on the battlefield. Um, and uh, yeah, the the bases are nice and quick and simple as well. Again, the bases you could you could do the bases a little bit more complicated, but like I was saying, the the models themselves are so clean and simple. I think they lend themselves to simple bases, um, uh, simple paint jobs, um, and getting the detail from other uh, other places than um, uh, overpowering them with with uh, details themselves. So rather than adding um, I don't know, like lots of rubble and skulls and um, uh, wires and little um, metal bars and, and beams and things on the bases to make it look like a city city fight area sort of thing. Rather than adding all that, I think they lend themselves to like a nice, nice clean, clean base. Um, and the same with the models themselves. Uh, I mean, ironically, you you then get to the the Praetors, which are absolutely gorgeous models, but incredibly busy with detail. They've got a lot of detail on them th themselves. Uh, the the Legion Praetors. Um, now I think we're going to do the 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 eyes. Oh no! So this is the this is the glaze. So we've got a little bit of a glaze. Um, we we have some Abaddon black still on the wet palette. Sorry, model color black still on the wet palette. So I just grabbed a uh, a brush full of the model color black uh, and added a lot of water. As you can see, we're kind of pulling the water around now, keeping it up towards the end of the bayonet. Um, so that's just to create a nice glaze uh, and a quick wash just to darken some of the areas that we want to uh, uh, create some shadow onto the uh, metallic areas. Um, so you'll notice when I'm applying it, uh, I'm trying to keep away from the top side. So even when I was applying it to the to the chest straps there, uh, keeping it to the top side, um, uh, sorry, to, keeping it to the bottom side to, for the shadow. Um, so the, the highlight itself just becomes pure uh, black metal um, yes you could go in with something like model air chrome or um, I think it's Stormhost silver which is a games workshop version uh, and add a, a, a like a specular highlight on top of that but I don't think we really need it okay so Corvus black next uh, 
and uh, we're going to use this for um, oh yep yeah. so <laughs> brand new brush brand new brush so Corvus Black uh, this is we're going to be using this for some chips uh, and a little bit of battle damage now the uh, the the benefit um, of doing this like I've been saying uh, is this is where you're going to get the detail um, and a little bit more of the interest uh, from uh, from the model um, and th this I mean we haven't really if if you if you kind of cast your mind back on what painting we've actually done on this model we've not really done that much painting and this is the this is the part here which I which I quite like which is which is actually doing a bit of painting um, we've uh, we've sloshed some some purple and some pink over we then put a massive glaze of purple over the top um, and then we've done some very very simple uh, picking out some details and some trim so this is Corvus Black now and all we're doing is we're adding a few random chips uh, and scratches um, add them in uh, add them in dots um, and uh, if you if you can have a nice uh, a newest brush um, just so that you can control the the, the tip size um, and where you're where you're applying it um, and once you've made once you've made a mark you can kind of scrub and scratch some marks near it uh, to try and keep it random now what you don't want to do is you don't want to do you don't want to have a, a, a um, like a quick hand you don't want to have a quick hand when you're doing this you want to apply one and then stop so you can see there i had a little bit of a quick hand and it ended up with six spots all in the same place so i went back in and just kind of joined some of them together um but uh, yeah if you have too fast a hand when you're doing this you end up with lots of spots in the same place so just try to slow your hand down add add one dot add, add a chip and then stop and then add another another uh, another chip um, and then scratches as well you just add a few scratches in scratches try and keep them uh, very straight like that one there so we're just adding a nice chip in there uh, and if you can if you can angle the scratches um, across uh, a um, a armor edge an armor panel edge then you can also add a bit of chipping on the uh, on the edge of the edge of the armor as well so i don't want to add too many chips to the head because it's already it's already quite there's, there's already quite a lot going on on the head as it is um it's got the the little fans on the cheeks uh, the little vents on the cheeks and we're going to add the glowy eyes as well um so i don't want to overpower too much on there um uh, just applying a few more chips all around uh, it, you you can get a little bit carried away doing this and i think arguably i'll probably do get a bit carried away um, I, I, i'm just getting excited by by uh, by, by chipping <laughs> chipping chipping the model up um but uh, yeah you can probably do a, a little bit less than this uh, it depends how, how battered you want it to be um uh, rather than rather than uh, adding chips like this all the way all the way across flat spaces i would probably suggest you do a few on the edges as well so you get a bit of um, uh, a bit of wear and tear on the edge of the armor plates now these are ceramite um so they won't be they're not metallic underneath um ceramite is like um uh ceramic it's almost like a ceramic uh, armor plate um, so that's why that's why we've got that dark color and then all we're going to do this is pink horror and we're just going in and we're just highlighting underneath just to add a bit of bit of 3d um, a bit of a 3d finish to the chips um, so you, you all the marks that you've made just go back in and just add a tiny little bit of, of, of pink horror underneath the chips uh, find each chip and just add a little bit of a highlight underneath each one um, again try to try to try to move the try to move your brush nice and slowly um uh, if you if you start stabbing a bit too quickly you'll start getting uh, far too many chips close to each other so it's important to uh, just be very particular on, on, on where you're applying these uh, again there I, I i'm getting a little bit too quick um and uh, applying a few too many too many scratches and it is incredibly warm here you'll see the the brand new brush is already drying the, the paint is already drying on the tip of the of the new brush um which is incredibly frustrating it's uh, it's really warm here at the moment in england um and uh, i think the stream yesterday i had to refill my wet palette twice uh, which is crazy um 
so it does get very humid here. If you are painting in a humid humid area, just make sure that you're adjusting the um, adjusting the mixes uh, and keeping the mixes for the right uh, proportions. So you'll notice here, rather than running my paintbrush right along the edge, I'm almost kind of uh, stabbing at the edge uh, to create a bit of texture across the uh, across the edge highlights. Um, so the, the the areas that you miss on the edge highlights almost look like a bit of a chip, uh, and then just going back in and, and adding final tiny tiny little highlights. These tiny little highlights really start pulling the highlights together. So the highlight placement, if you don't have a uh, if you don't have quite um, quite a smooth highlight placement or anything, uh, then these little nice neat uh, highlight lines uh, can help with that at all. Um, <laughs> you'll notice that I had to uh, adjust the position of the of the model there because as I was highlighting that uh, the brush was catching the uh, the shoulder pad um, so uh, yeah just make sure you're always highlighting on the uh, with the correct correct angles on the model um, and uh, yeah there we go so the vents uh, and just around the ears just to finish off uh, and uh, again, the, these little the little marks are tiny, tiny little marks, uh, but they, they, they really pull together the model and start giving it some detail and some um, some finish. You'll notice I'm not painting much detail on the on the lower half of the body, uh, and that's because we're going to do um, it's going to have some uh, dust on the bottom layer. Um, so we're going to put uh, some sand sand on the base and then we're going to add some powder and some dust uh, around all the bottom of the legs so that's just going to kind of uh, hide a lot of the work that you do on there so don't do too much work uh, around the around the feet and ankles because uh, that will get covered up uh, with the uh, with the dust later on last few little bits of highlights um, you could you could go one more you could find uh, find something above pink horror uh, I'm not entirely sure what the what the color above pink horror is I think the one that I've got is uh, one called squid orange uh, sorry squid pink um, from <laughs> not squid orange uh, squid pink from um, from game color Vallejo game color so I might uh, you could if you want to just uh, add add one extra highlight with this with some squid pink uh, but if you do if you do add an extra highlight on top, just make it very small. So you can see how tiny I'm making this little highlight with the pink horror now. Um, just make sure you're highlighting something that with that that small, those kind of small marks. And now the one thing one thing I wish I had done a little bit more on this model is make the head a little bit brighter. So uh, if you are going back, uh, if you're watching this video uh, before you start painting yours, you could make sure that you paint the head. A little bit more pink so you could add a bit more pink horror onto the head and that would just help pull um, pull a bit more attention up towards the head now this is a really simple way of painting the eyes this is one of my favorite ways of painting the eyes so it's arum and blue and all we're going to do is we're going to get arum and blue uh, and a little bit of white uh, so we start with pure arum and blue um, and it's it's watered down again so this is watered down uh, about three parts water to one part paint uh, and we're just going to glaze a little bit of uh, a glow underneath the eyes um, and this is so that that part of the cheek there you do want to try and keep purple uh, rather than go too pink um, because we do want the glow to be able to uh, to to show uh, and then arum and blue goes into the eye lenses uh, making sure it's nice and strong towards the front and then all we do I think we do three three different mixes so we've got arum and blue we then mix a tiny bit of white in there and then a tiny bit more white in there uh, and you'll see that in a second uh, any white can do um, I usually favor um, something called sminker titanium white uh, on this one I do use the the game color, um, that game color white that I just showed up on stream, and uh, that was just because it was out on my desk. So it doesn't matter which white you use, um, uh, be because you're adding a bit of white. Just uh, if you, you might need a little bit more water 
to uh, to make sure it's running smoothly off the brush uh, and you can see how warm it is because this brand new brush which I've just started using has already got little brushes uh, little um, bristles spraying out of it um, and the, the tip is already hooking and everything it's just getting so it's so warm here that uh, the paint is drying on the brush incredibly quickly so I keep having to go in and uh, and dry it off um, just adding a tiny bit so we did the glow underneath the cheek so this is just going to be a bit of an edge highlight see the paint is dry already it's just it's just not going on the brush uh, on the model and a little bit more white just for the center so every time we add the uh, every time we add a, an, an extra bit of white in there we just make the the um, the area of the lens even smaller that we're painting and then this is nearly pure white just in the front right in the center of the eye uh, so that we know that that's where the uh, the light is actually coming from and there we have it nice simple blue glowy eyes on the uh, on the Empress children um, the kind of the pale blue like that works really well with the purple as well. Uh, the other option you could do you could do green, uh, so green would work quite well. Uh, I'm just getting the, the tacky uh, putty uh, off the underside of the base there. Uh, so you could do green. Green would work quite well. Uh, I also wondered about doing yellow. I thought yellow might work quite well with the purple, um, but uh, eventually I, I, I decided just to go to the um, just to go to the, the pale blue. So this is um, some well, it's. For all intents and purposes, it's PVA glue. It's a little bit more of a silicon-based glue than PVA glue, but uh, PVA glue works absolutely fine. Uh, so you add a blob onto the base, uh, get a wet brush, uh, a crappy wet brush, um, and then just mix it around. Uh, make sure you're covering the whole base. And this is going to be for a little bit of sand onto the base. Uh, now, the sand that I use is uh, it's sharp sand from a builder's merchant. I went and grabbed a big bad bag of sharp sand uh, from a builder's merchant about three years ago, I think now. Um, now, when you get it, it's, in, it's incredibly damp. So what you do is you you get uh, some of the sand out of the bag uh, and you uh, drop it into a uh, Tupperware box or something. Take the lid off, leave the lid off, and then just leave it on a uh, leave it on a windowsill for a couple of days, uh, and then the sand will dry out. Uh, so it will lose all its moisture. So you want, and then and then it will look something like this. Uh, and that's it so that's sharp sand from a builder's merchant all dried out you can see how dry it is uh, and you just do that simple now once it's on there um, it'll take take a little while a little while to dry but um, once it has once it has dried you then water down some more PVA glue um, add a little touch of uh, washing up liquid in there uh, just one drop of washing up liquid and then you can um, soak PVA glue all over the base again um, and that will that will secure the sand in really really solidly um, and then that's what it looks like now uh, all I did that's just I had a coat of Agrax Earthshade on it that's all it is so it's just had Agra Agrax Earthshade so after I did the the second layer of PVA glue uh, it's just um, Agrax Earthshade over it now this is uh, Natural Sienna from Rival Crafts um, if you go to my Twitch stream, uh, you'll, uh, or even on my Discord, you'll find uh, my affiliate link for Rival Crafts. These are um, this, this is uh, it's, it's a good friend of mine. Uh, she does amazing basing stuff, um, and uh, I've been using her for a long time. So the, uh, the the way to use this, and I I try doing this with a little bit of water. Now I don't like the look. Uh, I don't like the effect that we get uh, now we've added a little bit of water. Um, I, I prefer it without the water because um, you get a you get a bit more control over the powder look. Um, so don't add the water. Um, if you if you look at uh, if you pop onto my Instagram you'll see some some uh, other models which I've done exactly the same uh, with the base, um, my Night Lords and also some World Eaters. Both of those videos will be coming soon. Um, and I didn't use the water on either of those, and they just have a bit better, uh, a bit more of a uh, of a dusty finish. Um, and you'll see me starting to add water here just to try and 
uh, soften out that, that uh, it, it almost goes a bit gunky um, one uh, the, a better way of doing this would have been if you have your uh, your well palette your wet palette uh, if you add a little, little uh, a little chunk of the powder into the well palette and then mix in a lot of water in with it and then you can apply that so that would also you'd almost be applying that like a like a wash uh, all over um, and uh, the the quantity I think the reason why this didn't work is the quantity of the water to the powder is uh, it was a bit too much powder so it ends up looking a bit chalky like this uh, I mean it still looks pretty good uh, I still quite like it I will go over I think I'll probably go over again uh, with some more um, some p more powder just to kind of soften over those transitions because like I say I think it just looks a lit little bit uh, it almost looks like mud now and it's supposed to look like dust um, so um, yeah I think I think that would be the better way of doing it so if you are doing this uh, so that was natural sienna from rival crafts um, if you are doing this yourself just just uh, apply that dry rather than adding the water uh, I will do a video because I'm going to do some titanicus nights at some point uh, I will be doing a video on using the powder as a as a wash uh, so that will be in in those videos uh, coming up uh, coming up soon um, and that is when you add a little bit of water to the powder but you you do it before you put it onto the model um, anyway uh, I hope you enjoyed that video uh, that is the Emperor's Children um, that's my color scheme for it uh, I hope you enjoyed watching it uh, and I hope you learned something as well uh, if you've got any questions please leave them below uh, and I will see you next time thank you very much